I've seen mixed reactions to Star Wars Rebels. I've heard it be called a kid's show and it's inconsistent. I've also heard it called one of the best things to come out of the Disney era. I'm somewhere in the middle of that. I love the show. I think it's great, but I do feel like it has a kid's tendency to it. Or at least that's what I thought before I stopped looking at it as an animation. When you look at the show as an animation, of course, you're going to see kid elements to it. And that's great because kids should be watching it honestly uh, we love star wars we think our kids should watch it is that child abuse no i don't think so but anyways what if i told you star wars rebels had a huge meaning a huge impact on the implications of the jedi order as a whole Welcome back everyone, I'm Gerald and I'm a Star Wars fanatic and you can be a Star Wars fanatic too. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications. Subscribing is absolutely free. We may not agree on every topic that I talk about, but we do agree on one thing. We love Star Wars. Okay, with that said, let's get on with today's topic. Alright, so I have to give some of the credit to a couple of my viewers who commented yesterday on the video about Kanan Jarrus' death. He died protecting those he loved. Not a big deal, right? That's what any husband, lover, father, mother, anything would do to the ones they love. They would protect them. They'd jump in harm's way to make sure the other ones got out of harm's way. And I would love to say that that Canaan jumping into the fire to save Hera, Ezra, and Sabine was the act that put him over the top, was the act that showed everybody what a character he was. But no, that was the climax. That was the end result and everything that had been building up in Star Wars Rebels from season one. Kanan Jarrus' sacrifice exemplified how he successfully loved and grew stronger in the light side of the Force because of that love. And I know a lot of you are thinking, oh no, Star Wars fanatic talking positive about more Disney stuff, but Disney just changes the lore of Star Wars. No, they're not changing the lore per se. I would say that they're more expanding it, expanding the lore. And that's what stories do. Why make new stories if you're not going to expand on the lore of the galaxy involved in it? But luckily, there aren't a lot of people that comment like that. There are just a couple, but I can forgive those because some people just don't like what Disney's doing. And I get it. That's your opinion. You're entitled to it. But on with today's topic. Uh, the whole show of Star Wars Rebels is about standing beside those you love and not forsaking them because of your emotional attachment to them. Quite the opposite of what we heard during the prequels with the Jedi, with Anakin Skywalker having to hide his love for Padme. And before the arguments made that Kanan really wasn't brought up in the Jedi Order, he was. He was roughly 12 years old when his own master died, Depa Balaba. So Kanan Jars, born Caleb Doom, then changed his name later to hide from Order 66. He knew about the no attachments rule in the Jedi Order. He knew it all too well. Why? I mean, even if he had no attachments when he was younger, he was still taken from his family and not allowed to communicate with them. But what Kane and Jars did was to confirm our own suspicions that having an emotional attachment as a Jedi would not turn you to the dark side. It might have had the potential, but any decision you make has the potential to turn you to the dark side. It isn't just emotional attachments. And Kanan had a lot of emotional attachments. The entirety of the Ghost crew was an attachment to Kanan, even the ghost itself. Now, when you think about it, what does Disney know about Star Wars lore? Well, I'll tell you this. The show was written by Dave Filoni, and he knew the Jedi were wrong in the mindset of attachments during the Republic days. Why does he know that? Because he was a protege of George Lucas himself. He knows too well. And this story would have continued that theme that attachments do not turn you to the dark side necessarily. Kanan showed it was very much possible to stay in the light and actually grow deeper into it because of his love for his eclectic family. Now, when you think back to the Republic, you think, who else had attachments back then. Well, Obi-Wan Kenobi had an attachment, but he gave in to the dogma of the Jedi Order and severed himself from that attachment. 
forsaking Satine to Mandalore without his intervention. Even attacked the one he saw as his brother and almost killed him because of that attachment and the Jedi Order's dogma. Had he stayed with Satine, he could have possibly protected her and she may have lived and they could have lived a longer life together. Anakin Skywalker had an attachment. He even went to Yoda talking about this attachment. Yes, he was a little vague about it, but Yoda kind of understood what he was getting at. And Yoda told him, you know, let go of your attachment. Let her die. Who cares? And Anakin didn't accept that. Had he been able to outwardly love Padme, the scenario might have changed. The Jedi Order might have flourished a little bit longer. So, Star Wars Rebels falls right into that theme that the Jedi of the past were wrong. Some of their rules were wrong. Some were right. They did some things very well. But others, like no love. That is wrong. And this show, Star Wars Rebels, proves that through Kanan Jarrus. And by leading by example, he showed Ezra Bridger the same thing. That attachments can help you out. It may have been inadvertent and he probably wasn't planning it. He was just looking for somewhere to belong because he'd been hiding from Order 66 for so long and the Purge of the Jedi. When he found this crew, he's like, okay, somewhere I can hide out a little bit more openly. But Star Wars Rebels shows that the Order in the past was wrong that a new way of thinking was necessary for the Jedi to thrive any further. The degradation of the Jedi was slow, but it was ongoing, partially because of the no attachments rule. It caused a lot of turmoil inside people, it even caused people to turn to the dark side because they weren't allowed to have those attachments. It wasn't because they had attachments that they turned to the dark side. It's because the Jedi order was so strict on that rule that they had to hide it and it caused them turmoil inside. Can you imagine having all these feelings and thoughts and not having anybody to talk to? Sure, you have the one that you love you can talk to, but there's nobody outside of that relationship you can talk to, not even a therapist. You can't even go to a therapist and tell them because they're like, aren't you a Jedi? Why are you loving people? Stop it. So having an attachment and keeping it hidden is far worse than having an outward attachment as far as light side dark side balance goes and i know you're all thinking yes we know this we know anakin turned to the dark side because of his attachments to his mother and and, and padme and ahsoka and i realize you all know this already but what i'm trying to convey is that star wars rebels has shown it is 100 percent possible to love and remain in the light side of the force yoda never grasped this concept. He never saw it as a flaw. You know how I know this? Because in The Empire Strikes Back, when Luke starts having the visions of Han, Leia, and Chewbacca in trouble on Cloud City, Yoda tells him, if you care about him, let him go. And there he goes again. His attachment issue is coming forth into his training to Luke Skywalker. So he's starting the next generation that he wants to thrive in the Jedi He's teaching them the wrong way again, starting the old ways all over again. But Luke Skywalker was no dummy. He said, you know what? Stuff your dog, my little green guy. I'm going to save my friends, or at least try. I'll die trying if I have to. And they're like, oh, you're not ready to face Vader and so on and so forth. He's like, I don't care. I'm going to go try. I love these people. I'm going to go help them out. So. The new Jedi way of thinking is coming to fruition, or at least starts coming to fruition. Then Luke Skywalker reverts back to the old Jedi ways when he's training Grogu and holds up the Beskar armor and the lightsaber and says, choose one. You can have your attachments, but you can't be a Jedi or you can be a Jedi and you'll never see this dude again. I don't know why Luke reverted, but maybe when Ezra Bridger shows up in live action, he can teach Luke a thing or two about his own master having those attachments, sacrificing himself, and being one of the lightest beings in the galaxy at that time. Look, the Jedi Order of the past is gone. Star Wars Rebels was the new beginning of that. And it showed that. It showed through Kanan that the love could be 
done without turn to the dark side. And I've said this a million times, but the Jedi Order is gone. The rules could be rewritten from this point forward. There's no one to judge the next generation. And Kanan started this new entry into the Jedi Code. Ezra, Luke, and Ahsoka now have that responsibility to teach the next generation as if the old generation's ways were a little bit skewed and wrong. So back to Kanan. The moment Kanan sacrifices himself for his love and for his family is the moment he gets his eyesight back. Now, if you haven't noticed, the eyes are a gateway to the soul when it comes to the force look at the sith their eyes turn yellow and black and glow and jedi now apparently can regain their eyesight if they have lost it in this moment kanan gets to see his love and his family one last time he gets to feel their heartbreak as they stand there helplessly knowing what's going to happen and what has to happen it was devastating but it was necessary. Not only necessary to save his friends and his loved one, but also necessary to change the Jedi Order as it begins anew. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Am I way off base with this one, or do you agree? Do you hate Rebels because it's a Disney property, or do you like it and think it's just okay? Let me know. I'd like to hear from you. I do read all the comments. I don't always get a chance to reply to everyone, but I do read them. So thank you for comments, and keep them coming. This is Gerald from Star Wars Fanatic signing off, wishing you all great health and happiness. Thank you for watching, and remember, this is the way. The only way.